Do I, need, do I need to take my shirt off too, nigga? That's how we come today, nigga. I could do a podcast from a tank top, nigga. It ain't even that type of party, man. Bro, that's what you look at it look like, dude. You got the bun up, nigga. nigga, nigga it's on, nigga. it's like it's up. like a hundred degrees outside, and my it's partner of mine, too, nigga. my partner of mine, only live like um she only worked like four minutes, like a four minute walk from the crib. So we trying to be better. We trying to walk back and forth on our lunch breaks into work and shit. So I had to walk outside with her, but it is hot. As fuck, <laughs> like as fuck, my boy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I had to do it to him. I didn't even realize it, but I appreciate you though. You know. Hey, bro, you just inked up, tatted up, yatted it up. You know what I'm saying? I just trying to get like you, man. You get the link. Okay, y'all don't. Cool. What y'all don't know is this nigga next time got hella tattoos. He's just hella <laughs> reserved, so he ain't, he ain't gonna show y'all niggas. But I know the truth. Whatever, nigga. Whatever tattoo you just seen on me, I need to see him too. Right. I need to figure that out. Who did that? <laughs> Who put that marker there? For real. <laughs> Word up. The gun train is on its way, people. Just wait for it. But why he's gone? We're logging in. Let me tell y'all something about y'all motherfucking selves. You are now tuned in to the motherfucking podcast, folks. We here live in effect. This episode, what, bro? What episode is this, man? Real shit. I think this episode 26. Episode 26. That means we done did this shit 25 times and this is the 26th one. We here live in effect and I'm coming with it. Oh, you got something? Off top. Dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> Is Charles Barkley? <laughs> Look, if first word call about this Charles Barkley, you know it's some bullshit. Yeah, you know it. Charles Barkley versus KD, man. This has been going on for a little minute. They've been killing each other lately. Is KD really that nigga now that Curry to win this championship by himself? Is Charles Barkley just a hate nose nigga? Does KD need to get his own championship? Where is KD going? I told y'all last episode we started off with free agency. We here with free agency. Oh, KD. You gonna win another championship? You gotta take your head off the mic. Uh, yeah. You know if KD gonna win another championship? How you got? What do you gotta do? Uh, <laughs> I know I got the answer. Yeah. He gotta win the championship. I mean, he got. He got. To, he got to. Nah, he ain't gonna be. I mean, to do what? What's the end goal? That's the question. He already a Hall of Famer. He got two rings. He got a finals MVP. What else has he got to prove to anybody? I mean, nothing. I mean, if he's trying to be in LeBron, Kobe, and Jordan conversation, then he got a lot to prove. But if, they ain't, if that's not what he thinks, then he don't have nothing to prove. Because he's going to be in the next tier. That next tier is about 20 people wide. You know, about at least 10 to 15 people wide when you get to that next tier. Under the Kobe, Jordan, LeBron, and shit, Steph might cr- climb in there. I mean, no. you got the. I mean, I'm a Kareem man myself, but when you if you start adding the older and the centers, you know, if you start adding the centers, but when people talk about a goat, they don't talk about a center. You know, so I mean, I ain't talking about no centers, but yeah, if you're trying to be and in why that why are centers always excluded? Because <laughs> they seven feet tall. Yeah, pretty much. That's some bull. <laughs> That's whack. It used to be when I was younger, it was always considered non center. You would always hear the word non center. Non center. Because centers are just cheating. I mean, because it's just a different game. It's just a different game. I mean, you can't, you can't judge Michael Jordan against Shaq. I mean, you just can't. Just so they would never. <laughs> so people don't. Where you think KD going? I both of us leave. Where's where Shaq, you at, producing? I take Shaq and Kareem over fucking Jordan, LeBron, or Kobe. If I was starting something or you know trying to build a super team or whatever you want to call it, I'm gonna take is, my motherfucking big dominant center before either one of them. Is KD better than uh, Carmelo Anthony? Hell yeah. Oh okay. What about Allen Iverson? Because I'm uh, in that second <laughs> tier. Where is he? 
I mean, it is the time. I don't rank people by number. <laughs> if you got a top 10, top 15, that's good. Put them wherever you want to. I say the names, but you put them whatever order you want to. What I'm saying is, if he ends up in that second tier, he's going to end up getting lost in the sauce behind a lot of legends. I mean, you can't get lost that in the NBA. That's the way they do it. You ain't getting lost in the NBA. Shit, these motherfuckers from the 80s and 90s, Patrick Ewan, Charles Barkley, they ain't lost yet. Ain't that's the Dr. 90s. J. Dr. J, right. he ain't lost. Dr. J played in the 60s, goddammit. People still know still know who he is and still know what impact he made. So but with all but that's like you that's what three players from the 60s, two players from the 60s. I'm saying I could name I could name plenty of them, but don't yeah, but get... 60s in your time ain't that far away. I can't. <laughs> well, what I'm like, saying is the greatness is still there. You still know who these people is. You know what I'm saying? Who these people is. They ain't never been forgot. Ain't nobody ever been forgotten in the NBA. NBA make sure that shit. All right. Um, this is something I want to ask you. Do you give a fuck that the Broncos has a black owner now? No, they don't. So that's a myth. They got a black president. The Broncos <laughs> owner. The Broncos got bought by the Waltons. Yeah, but one of the owners that was part of the Walton family is a black person. So they try to say they're the first people to have some black owners. I don't know. I got to see that. I don't know what you're talking about. I did see with a family in there, and there was a black guy that was trying to buy it. Some hedge fund guy. I think he was, he was a black hedge fund guy, but I don't know if they got together or something like that. But you got to Google that and show me how is he an owner? Because to my knowledge, the Waltons bought him. And the Waltons is crackers crack from Arkansas. Maybe not. Maybe I'm tripping. You right? Because I knew the Waltons bought it, but I thought they was part owners. It did say two two families' names. I mean, I it says Broncos could make history. That says could make. It don't say officially happened yet. So that's what I'm trying to see. So there was a black guy that was trying to buy it. So that, that story, whatever you read, is over. When you um, you still got your hand over the mic. Oh shit! There's a the team been sold. So that got to be old. Well, there's a team that got a new like black woman as commissioner. The Raiders. The Raiders, the Oakland Raiders. Okay, okay. How you feeling about that? Like, what is is these are they, are they trying to avoid I don't it? Know, also, I don't know who the job is. I mean, I don't know. I think she's president of the team. I don't really know what the president of the team does. I'm sure it's a big step. I mean, you run, I'm sure you run and run in the whole operation, but you know what I'm saying? You still answer to the owner. You still ain't shit but a secretary. To me, the president of a, a, a franchise seems to me to be the job like Press say, I mean, not pre, uh, chief of staff or something at the at the White House. Oh, like, okay. You're a coordinator, you a coordinator, motherfucker. But I mean, I'm sure that's a big position. I mean, hell, yeah, president of the team, because Washington got a president of the team, a black guy, and you know, what I'm saying everybody's saying he's gonna change. The, you know, what I'm saying so you got to have power if you're gonna be changing, some, you know, some some shit. Oh, the the dude for the commanders, or they yeah, never they yeah. are now the commanders. Yeah, it's a black yeah. guy. It's a black guy that's their president, and they were saying how good of a move that was to bring him in because he can do different different things. So, if you can do things, then you got power. But I feel like they only brought him in to cover up for that lawsuit they had going on. Well, maybe, but hey, you get your you take your opportunities where you get them. Shit. Okay, 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 okay. Then uh, you got anybody that opportunity? Especially if they use that opportunity to hire the right nigga. You know what I'm saying? If they just go hire a nigga who ain't gonna make no job, like fucking the Texans, they got there had a guy who was black man that was doing the job, fired him to hire his fucking assistant, Levy Smith, who ain't done a motherfucking thing in 10, 15 years. I mean, why you go hire Levy Smith? Why? I mean, what's wrong with hiring Levy Smith? <laughs> I like it. Didn't he because used to be the coach at Tampa Bay? <laughs> He coached Tampa. He coached. He coached plenty of fucking places, but he's been trash. He made one little Super Bowl run with uh, 
Chicago, and that team was trash, and they was trash ever since then. They went to the Super Bowl. That's it. He's been trash ever since. He's been to college and all. He was trash in college. <laughs> so, hey, so you really don't give a fuck what the person look like. It's a matter how they do their job. <laughs> I'm saying, if you're going to give black folks the opportunity and you still give these retread-ass niggas who can't do nothing, they ain't going to do nothing, then they ain't helping the fucking cause of getting niggas more jobs. Just because mm. he did that. Like, they had a black man there, David Cully. Them boy put on a better season than anybody expected they was going to do. But they knew they was going to fire him. Well, if you knew you was going to fire him, the best fucking thing you could have came back with was Lefty Smith. Get the fuck out of here. Now, do you feel like that's Who's because already of... on the staff? Who was there? <laughs> who, who worked with David Cully? <laughs> that's why that's why they hired them though. They figured, well shit, we no, could just that, but but you already knew that. You already had that. You already got that in your building. You might well kept David Cullen. What you fired David Cullen for? That's the question. Why did they fire David Cullen? Yeah. That's exactly what I was about to ask you. What you fired David Cullen for? Shit. Why did they fire him? One, one less mind around the building. Because at first last year you thought that this mind was the one to, to head the operation. So you get rid of him and you or you add Lovey Smith and you say, okay, well, he's going to help. And so now you don't got rid of one mind. You might well kept both minds in the building. You could have kept Lovey as a damn uh, defensive coordinator. Yeah. So wait, you, you think he can still coordinate? You don't think he can be a head coach? Who? Uh, Lovey? Lovey Smith. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What about, uh, what about your boy B.A.? You oh, heard okay. it? You heard, like, so you wanted, like, B.A., they got him in the office, and he recently made a statement talking about he really loved what he did in the draft, trying to make it about him again. But everybody, like, nigga, you ain't even got no job no more. Like, what do you, <laughs> what did you really, what are you doing? Why are you talking? I mean, B.A. old, man. I think he don't fuck cancer and everything. Shit, B.A. don't be wanting to do that shit. That nigga old. He don't look that old. He don't look as old as he is. He fucking old. I don't know exactly how old he is, but he, I know he probably top five age of coaches in the league. He old, and he done, I think he done, he done had cancer. Okay. We're going to uh, – I'm going to ask you about your Bucks real quick. You like y'all free agencies moves lately? I didn't even see what they did. I ain't been uh, – Oh, yeah. Y'all y'all done made – y'all done picked up a little – y'all snagged somebody. I was like, oh, that's a nice little grab right there. It was – um. Y'all got rid of Chinzo. Who? Y'all got rid of y'all got rid of that shooter that y'all had and replaced him with a better one. Hold on, I'm gonna look it up real quick. Come on, Chinzo. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Y'all re-signed Bobby Port Joe Ingles. That's what y'all picked up. Y'all picked up Joe Ingles. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And re-signed Bobby that's Portis. Good. Yeah, that's the type of shit they need. They should have never let fucking uh, PJ go, but that's another story. Who, PJ but, Tucker? Well, PJ Tucker's a traveling man right now. You notice that? Because he done left Miami. He and all, yeah, he and Philly he now. Because he make more money like that. Shit. Hire a gun, nigga. Every year, whoever contended. Man, we need that PJ Tucker. Shit, okay. <laughs> but see, I think him going to Philly has something to do with James Harden. Because you remember he used to play with them in Houston. Well, I'm sure they had a lot to do with it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sure they had a lot to do with it. But, I mean, PJ going to go wherever the fucking money is. He got him a chip now. So he playing with house money. He just going to be... Get, that's why he's uh, Milwaukee. I don't know how Milwaukee didn't pay him. I don't know how they let that shit go. Because y'all didn't think y'all needed him. And y'all really did. If Western face don't go down, no, the whole season's different. Yeah. I mean, I think they went to, they go to the finals if uh if Middleton plays. But still, you still that's why you need PJ. That's why you needed that whole team. You needed a whole team. Shit. They won that. When they won, Giannis got hurt. But niggas, they had niggas like PJ there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You need niggas like PJ Tucker. You don't let them shit out the building to me. Well, they let Pat Bev leave Minnesota. They traded him. Now, they, they trade them to that's, Utah. That's hey, but this that's, is hey, I got a homie. Somebody. They've been telling me Donovan Mitchell coming to Miami, and I ain't believe him. I was like, man, we're not getting Donovan Mitchell. We finna keep Victor Oladipo, resign some niggas, bro. I don't really want Donovan. 
Then when I saw Pat Bev get traded to Utah, I was like, oh, yeah, we really is going to get down a bit because we're going to take Pat Bev too. Nah. Y'all we got we lost P.J. Tucker. We add- I don't think y'all going to get him just because don't nobody want what y'all got to trade. <laughs> don't nobody – y'all ain't going to get nobody in a trade because don't nobody want no fucking Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you said. They keep saying, oh, uh, Kyrie or uh, KD can go. Bitch, who the fuck going to trade? They start playing for some fucking duck. Bitch, Miami ain't one with them. What the fuck I'm going to fucking do with them? That's not happening. Not happening because y'all ain't getting nobody on no trade shit. That y'all, I don't think y'all getting down to Mitchell. I don't think you're getting KD or Kyrie or whoever else out there. I didn't I'm, want. I'm not trading no motherfucking superstar for no fucking Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero. No. And we all, and I also heard Biden, a six nine goddamn center. What the fuck I want with a fuck nigga? That's y'all the way y'all play, and that's cool. But we don't play with the motherfuckers. And the hell, no. Well, but we offering all three of them. See, that's what you fail to realize. The three of them together. And uh, did what? Did what? We already see two NBA again. finals in three years. We, we, uh, uh, okay. Two NBA finals in three years. How many teams can say oh, that? How many teams NBA can say finals. that? Three two NBA finals. finals. Three NBA finals in two and three. I mean, two NBA finals in three years. Who did that? Miami Heat did that. What years did they go? Uh, what three years did, did Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson go to the fucking finals? They went to the we finals went, one time. We went to the finals twice. Once in the bubble in this year. This year? Oh, no, we lost in the conference finals. We lost in the conference finals. Y'all I'm tripping. He used to call he used to conference finals. Yeah, we did. This year we did. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We lost in the Eastern Conference finals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, yeah, yeah, be sorry, Ashton. So what? That shit don't mean nothing. The niggas ain't winning nothing. And I'm not taking them fucking players just because y'all beat Philly and uh, fuck else that's sorry. Y'all, uh, the Hawks or some shit. Yeah, y'all it was the, the Hawks. We was the one seed. It's y'all supposed to be smooth sorry sound. two teams in the playoffs. And I'm we was the one seed. Okay, but y'all beat the sorriest two teams in the playoffs. Why am I going to trade you a superstar for your role players on them fucking teams? And they didn't do shit. I'm going to tell you why, because his, his name is Pat Riley. He did it before. He'll do it again. He done traded some bullshit before and ended up with Victor Oladipo. I hate, but I'm just saying, you can't plan on that shit. I mean, I'm not going to say I'm not banking it. on it either. The only nigga Pat I Riley, thought we legit. Pat Riley will convince you to take. Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson. The only, the only nigga I was legit. Pat Riley is. Yeah, Pat Riley kiss my motherfucking ass. <laughs> Pat Riley, he kiss my ass if he think I'm gonna trade him down to the Mitchell for some fucking Tyler Hero. <laughs> now, what, 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 I, what, I, what I'm hearing is, because this is the only trade I like as a Miami Heat fan, and this is more far fetched. You definitely gonna tell me hell nah. But Dame Lillard for for the whole team though, we had to give up everybody. I ain't gonna cap, but I'd rather have Jimmy. It was like Tyler Hero. No, it was Duncan, Bam, Martin, and another nigga, and uh, like three or four picks. It was almost like just as much as Rudy Gobert was worth. Tyler, I mean Dame Lillard ain't going nowhere, but ain't nobody trading for y'all players. Y'all, y'all's not in the trade market because y'all players ain't nobody want. There's way better prospects out there on other teams than Miami Heat. Now, it works for Miami. Knock it out the box. Go ahead, do your thing. But ain't nobody going to trade for that shit. You know, them guys work good in that system. You get them on your team, then you're going to be fucking crying. <laughs> All right, now. All right. We're going to switch it over. Is it too early to get your Super Bowl prediction? Super Bowl, dog, no, yeah. Yeah, who gonna make it to who gonna make it all the way right now? Who you think? I don't know. I don't get it. I, I got my know. pick. It's the Bills. I'm about to start doing my fantasy research. I give a fuck about the Super Bowl. <laughs> Not you don't give a fuck about the Super Bowl. I don't. Shit. 
I don't give a fuck who won the Super Bowl. There's two teams. I'm a bet on one. Ride those. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, two teams I, I worry about motherfucking fantasy. That's what the fuck I worry about. All right, all right. I hear that. I hear that. Fantasy right. is about to get started. We is going to get lit. Wiz, you play fantasy? Wiz don't follow no sports, man. He weird. I play fantasy. I know How football, but I don't follow sports. I'll be real with you. How you How play fantasy football and don't follow sports? How's you a former athlete Nigga. and don't play the decisions of no sports? Let me ask look, you this look, question. Look, oh, look, no, look, 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 look. <laughs> First ahead, of all, ahead. I had a very traumatic experience. You ever been in a team so bad that you just kind of rethink your whole sports career? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that was that was that was my college. That's hey, where I went next That time. didn't happen I kinda until fell college, out of love. though. I kind of fell out of love with it. Yeah, bro, you the third look, bro. You the you third know- high, you the third highest scholarship on the team. Everybody talk about, oh, this nigga state champion. Da, 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 da. So I'm thinking, okay, cool. We got some we got some goals, we got some missions. Cool. Y'all y'all recognize, right? Nigga, I get red shirted. I lose 15 pounds in the two week training camp. I got a Swiss positions and we suck. Yo, I quit. <laughs> like I quit. It's done. It's over. Why you ain't just go to another school? <laughs> I, was, I, I, I wasn't really trying to play football like that. I really wasn't trying that's to play. That's what it is. Like, you yeah. could transfer if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, they ain't going to accept nothing. They KCU. Oh fuck no. Oh, hell he no. had no credits. I think I go to class. Uh, yeah, that too. I'm dry stitching. <laughs> no, that, that's cool. I, I don't give a fuck about that part. Home. All you had to do was go home, nigga. That's what I did. <laughs> you went home. You could have got them bullshit credits at community college and been straight for the next season. As soon as you saw the fuck shit, you should all have. See, that's that's my thing. Uh, like, I wasn't even really supposed to continue playing football. Like, I was good enough. I just didn't have to drive. I don't want to be up at 5 a.m. working out. Then we got a meeting. Then I got class. Then I got another workout or a meeting. Then I got afternoon class. Then I got practice. Because I'm not doing all that six days out the week just to get my ass whooped on Saturday. We ain't got no lights on the field. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and that's and that's with any team, you know what I'm saying? Not every team is D1, you feel me? So it's just like it wasn't uh, for me, yeah. bro. It wasn't for me. I wasn't dedicated. But, this but, nigga hey, Zaid tell, was drinking the Kool-Aid. Go back, though. go back. What? Talk about your high school days, bro. Cause coming into college, you would have thought that nigga was a Hall of Famer, firstly. The way they <laughs> like, put it, yeah, for sure. <laughs> like the way they talked about this nigga, bro, you would have thought this nigga NFL bound. We have no idea why he's here. That's that's because that's because they already had Coop, bro. They already had Coop, so they was looking at me as another Coop, and I'm like, bro, I'm not Coop. I'm not. I'm not that nigga, Aaron Cooper. But nah, but in high school, basic, tell basic, them how many state championships you got, bro. Basic, basically, coming out of high school, my high school, we had uh, our our senior class won three out of four, three out of four state championships. Um, I personally didn't get there until the second half of the sophomore year, tight shit. But junior year, senior year, I played. Uh, junior second half of junior year and senior year I started. Um, I think my senior year I had close to close to 100 tackles. A lot of them were assisted. That's just because our defense was raw. Um, and then we had I had a few great plays in the state in the state finals or whatever. We was good. We was like uh my whole high school career for that class was like 53 and some 53 and six something something like that something crazy. So when they came in, I mean, they, I, I, how many of um, them uh, went D one? Uh, la, 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 la. out of my class, yeah, yeah, your class. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. we had a, we had a fire my senior year. We had a fire as junior class. So I don't think a lot of my niggas went to either D two or JUCO, um, because niggas was dumb. But we had um we had a few of them go like our running back that year. He went to uh he went to Navy, <laughs> which he's at WKU now. But um and then a wide receiver he um went to uh, Austin P. But he's at WKU now too, at Western. So those are the only two niggas that made it D one. But we was in uh we was in five A the next class up was six A Kentucky goes all the way up to six A. Yeah, y'all y'all got y'all got some look like they can play football players in Kentucky. <laughs> what it what it was is we just know football, bro. You know, like we, yeah, yeah, y'all look like y'all can play. Y'all look like y'all can play. We know we know <laughs> football, right? Like te- like my my coaches would be like, okay, so like. They know seven days ahead what the weather going to be like on Thursday. So for this 30, 45 minutes, it's finna rain. We're finna be in the gym still working. You know what I'm saying? It was that type of program. So that's what really made us great. It wasn't necessarily that we had the best players. We had the best program for show in the state. Like for show. Yeah. That shit, that, that shit worked for my high school until, until I played. <laughs> so you got up there. Start fucking yeah. it up. <laughs> nigga, shit. Nigga, them niggas was, oh, 
was fucking going to the playoffs every, every slap fucking year, getting put out the first round. They, I mean, and then when we get there, goddamn, we win one motherfucking game, two games. <laughs> <laughs> what was the difference? Like, I think it was the best team, one of the best team. I went to one of the best high schools in the state. But my brother played there, the big was the best in the state, nigga. But I fucking glad <laughs> I got that nigga. We won like three games. <laughs> we sucked like so motherfucking bad. They, they rezoned. Everybody. We was all everybody, little brother. We had all the big heads like a motherfucker. <laughs> After getting y'all's ass up. <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to live off the legacy of their big brothers went out there and yeah. got smacked. Got them the niggas couldn't wait to beat y'all at. We, we got the only white boy quarterbacks. Yeah, they <laughs> little brothers had a grudge with y'all niggas. Hey. <laughs> yeah. You know, we had the only white boy quarterbacks. The only time we had white boy quarterbacks is when I played. <laughs> <laughs> trying to run an option with white boys. Everybody Shit wanted their Tim Tebow. Shit was terrible. Shit, these motherfuckers wasn't no Tim Tebow. These niggas was Nick Foles. Nick Foles. <laughs> <laughs> these white boys was Nick Foles. These motherfuckers were never an option, goddammit. A slow ad, two slow ad, two fullbacks at running back, goddammit. That wasn't worth that was slow as fuck. Nigga, that shit was fucking like he said, that's why he say that. You think a motherfucker kill your passion, goddammit. That shit damn sure ain't make me want to play no motherfucking football, goddammit. I started being bad. Fuck football. Shit. I think I couldn't even make it to college. Boy, but the high school team was so bad. And what? they got no. They got no. Uh, <laughs> in the goddamn shit. I don't know. I ain't going to whiz in here, so I ain't even going to make him talk about that. But I am going to switch it up a little bit. Did you get a chance to look up the shooting in Akron? No, I, I pretty much understand everything I need to understand. Unless something you found out was a different, uh, unless you found out something different, different information that you gave me prior, I mean. Nah. Only thing is, uh, they shot him a few times while he was laying on the ground already. Oh, well. <laughs> I figured that's how you was going to say He's already dead, damn, dead in the motherfucker. Okay, he's already dead. You should have stopped pulling the trigger. Ah, oh, fuck that. I don't give a fuck. That's funny. That's so crazy. Uh, what else happened? We finna talk about these niggas rapping. You listen to the Drake album yet? We talk about Saucy Santana Drake with you? I know y'all talk about, yeah, I mean, I, I, I listen to a little bit of it. I mean, there's no need for me to listen to the whole thing. There's no need for you to listen to the whole thing. I'm going to think the same thing about all the songs. I mean, Drake, I mean, he comes with a good song. I like it. Okay. If it's on that back of the album, then it's probably not some fire that, it, that is going to propel him into any more stardom than he has. <laughs> <laughs> He's good. Okay. All right, this is something uh, the niggas, or me and some of my niggas was talking about not too long ago, and I was like, I got to ask Unc about this, though, but R&B niggas today in our age, we feel like they say some real unnecessary, not unnecessary, but savage things. And has that always been the thing to do in R&B, or are the lyrics getting better in R&B today? What you saying, like vulgar, vulgarity or whatever? Not even vulgarity, but it's like <laughs> clever and we in the text phase. Bars, more bars. Bars, yeah. Like it seems like the R&B niggas are really giving bars, bars that you would actually think or say to like, oh, can I say that? Or if I ever said that, <laughs> boy, or did this nigga ever say that to a woman for real? Because if he said that, boy, he need to get slapped. You know what I mean? Like, was there ever some moments like that in R&B? Cause that's what we hear in R and B today. We like, what is going on? But well, was it all simp shit? They ain't really saying they rapping. I mean, Chris Brown, majority at the time is rapping more than singing. He's just rapping with. with we weren't with talking about Chris Brown though. We were referring to artists like The Weeknd, Brent Fias, uh, 
niggas of that nature, just more okay, yeah. like yeah. Well, no, well, yeah. You, you always had Prince. You gonna say Prince? You always had Prince. That be. So what they what they doing ain't shit but mimicking that because that's he started doing that shit because and that shit been so, around since the sixties. But even even Prince songs, and excuse my lack of knowledge here, but there's Prince songs where he said vulgar lyrics, not even vulgar, but like I'm sexy that mother- nigga type lyrics sexy too. Mother- sexy motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> they gave a whole song named Sexy Motherfucker. <laughs> I didn't know that. Eighties, <laughs> so yeah, no, yeah. Prince always crossed lines. I mean that. Niggas wouldn't be crossing lines for the press. Sexy MF. All right, better. We're going to add that to the list. We got to go listen to that. We better go listen to that. For the show, for the show. Okay. Nigga had ass, the nigga had jeans with his ass out in the video. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> nigga had cheeks. Nigga has cheeks out for your motherfucking ass. See, with, now you back, bro. Come on, man. You quit what? leaving me, bro. Quit that was leaving my last me, time. Man. That was my last time. What happened? What I mean? God, leave, bro. So I'm talking to up, bro. I'm trying to see. I was like, is R&B more savage today than it was back then? And what he, you mean by savage? <laughs> the things like, and I'm not talking about, he brought up Chris Brown. He thought I was talking about Chris Brown. I wasn't necessarily referring to Chris Brown. I was referring to the weekends, the Brent Fias, the niggas oh. that is it Say more the savage shit. as far as like explicit content? Not explicit content, but bars. I mean, they're, no, no, they're bars. not because they're, no, they're not because the line that they're crossing has already been crossed and they're just walking across it. So I don't think you can say it's more savage or more like you know what I'm saying. Wrong. You want me to keep what I'm trying to say? The PC version of what I, all them lines for y'all. I don't think so. I think your whole generation was a bunch of simp ass niggas. And all your R&B songs is crying out. You keep bringing up Prince. That's what that, I, that, I don't. Prince been around since the '60s, nigga. Exactly. So is that y'all, nigga? I'm talking about these '90s, they '80s niggas. Here. Give me a '90s, so '80s nigga. Already been crossed. And you're saying that oh, they are crossing lines, nigga. He crossed those lines before they, way before they was even taboo, nigga. So I mean, what you doing now, nigga? You got gay marriage and abortions. What you talking about? I mean, you're not crossing no line saying you're how bad you're a fucker, girl. That is not crossing no line no more. Nah, nah I don't think it's loose. not like you talk about nigga, those lines being crossed. Those lines, you walk across saying you walk across pure sand where the wind done come back over and blew the shit right back over again. Y'all walk across pure sand these days, and you sit here talk about uh, they they crossing the line or they, they ain't doing shit. All they doing is following footsteps in the sand. All I'm saying is, can you name another nigga other than Prince? Like Prince is the nigga known for doing it. Oh, uh, That's what I'm. All right, we get it. R. Kelly. I knew you were going to go to R. Kelly. Give me one more. I would just wasn't finna get it. Okay. Yeah, well, shit. <laughs> yeah. What you said? You looked at me. I gave you one more. Then you said, "No, nah, I knew you were gonna do that. Try to give me another one." Shit. You just said, "Give me two more." Shit. Let me say that the only reason I don't want to give you R. Kelly is because he's talking about little girls, and that's not cool. <laughs> they don't know what that nigga talking about, man. That know. nigga's more savage than all man, of them, bro. I'm about to say that's that's savage. If that's what we're that's talking savage. about. <laughs> Like I said, these niggas ain't just walking in footprints. It's already in the motherfucking sand, nigga. You ain't got to worry about no footprints. That so makes it more savage than everybody else. I mean, you, you talk about, um, you, you had songs that was, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I guess for the time, meeting in my bedroom. I mean, I, I mean I'm mean, i not a big artist. Oh, when I, say, I, I guess I'm going to give you specific interest. Albums that are raunchy and nasty that my girl could tell you all day, you know what I'm saying? She could probably list, uh, you know what I'm saying? A hundred songs all day. I don't listen to them album songs. I, the songs from R&B that I know is on the fucking radio. Yeah, that's you know my issue saying? too, because I'm not really that big of a fan of that music, but I bet my girl could do the same thing. Um, but she yeah. could do it for the new generation too, as far as like talking about the yeah. Fiazes of the world, yeah, you know, those that's type what of I was saying. Oh, shit, because I don't think it's any more savage. Shit. 
I guess R. Kelly. <laughs> R. Kelly, yeah. R. Kelly. I guess wild. this is just a big transition to talk about R. Kelly again, huh? Like, <laughs> nah, nigga. Hey, the nigga just got sentenced to what was it? Thirty about, years. The first two people I'm gonna think about it. Uh, you know, across the lines when it come to, you know, saying R and B music, just be saying something, stepping out of a bound. Them the first two people I would think of. You know, other than that, is there I mean, a third person? Just curious. I like, guess. Man, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a professional r and I don't listen to people's album, their whole album. Yeah, I get what you're saying. You, you know what I'm saying? So I'm sure it's some some uh, two H-Town songs or some shit. That, oh, that Lord. Some 112, yeah. some Drew Hill. Cisco yeah, that said some foul shit before. before. Yeah. <laughs> Any of them. I, I just don't know them off the top of my head, but I guarantee you if my girl was here, she'd name five of them off the top of your head, songs that nobody ever listened to, they just on the album. Uh, I mean, they allow you to play shit on the radio now, too, that was not allowed to be able to be played, or was it? Y'all don't even have radio right now, excuse me. Radio is, is irrelevant. So, people going straight to, you can listen to everything unedited. Like, we didn't have that. You had to purchase something to get it unedited. Mm. <laughs> you had to buy this motherfucker. Okay, and I, and I think real, real quick, and I think that's crazy because that's becoming the model again. Niggas are coming back to that. You know what I'm saying? Like whether you want to look at the OnlyFans thing, whether you want to look at how niggas are pushing out music and stuff like that. You yep. get what you can get for free, but you want that whole thing. Niggas are starting to monetize, and I thought that was interesting. Yeah, but we was just talking about that Tiger and YG dropped a song recently where they dressed up. You, we was talking about that with you on here, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so the and then I was arguing with Coach and another nigga about Tiger's position in the rap game, and they was like, "Tiger had the don't position." Tell me he's on this light skinned nigga side, Bruh, These niggas told me that Tiger was on track to be that nigga, like, like really was supposed to be that guy, huh? After 10 years, which <laughs> no. no, they said, they said, and I'm like, people don't no. react to people like that, bro. That shit don't happen. You can't be around as long as he. What about for that? I'm finna see this nigga free, bro. We finna bring these tiger defenders. I was already finna send in the message. You blocking the mic, huh? Oh, shit. Yeah, you don't, uh, <clears throat> You don't propel yourself above people that's been around the same amount of time as you, and you've been around for ten fucking years. You just don't jump over motherfuckers. I mean, man, get the fuck out of here. Tiger been around too long. So I'm on track to be the man. No, they were saying he was. He said not anymore. They're oh, no. saying. Okay, yeah. he they was. were saying. I thought he was, thought he was in his first two three years. I did. I was like that motherfucker because he could he rapped before before he made. Uh, what's the uh, Rack City? Everything before Rack City was fire. I liked his style and shit before that, and when he changed up and started doing that kind of shit like that, when he changed up, to, I think that's what killed him. I mean, I was just gonna say that's what killed him because that's what made him all his money. So you know, what I'm saying I, I'm definitely not saying that, but what I'm saying is this: the flow and the shit that he had. At that point in them first two, three years or whatever, three or four years that he, you know what I'm saying, that he was out making music, then, you know what I'm saying, yeah, but nah, I would never, I mean, nah. It's See, too late for that. You, you've been out too long. You can't do that shit after you've been out so long. It, ain't nobody ever suddenly become the man. Nigga done dropped four or five albums. Now he's the man. And see, look, it was they were saying his first two mixtapes made him like that nigga. And if he had kept up with that kind of style, that trend, he would have been up there, but it just didn't pan out. And I was like, he either started a writing for Drake and the rest of the niggas that was on the camp. And so all his good bars got snatched up by them, or B. He just decided to play it back because Drake and Nicki came into play, bro. Like, he's not he's not a top to five money. YMCB rapper, bro. That's the one to make money. Period. Facts. That's all it was. Especially, like, you were on the roster with Drake and Nicki, right? It was one thing back then, but now looking at both of them now and Wayne, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of hard. Like, let, let's, let's be honest, bro. How many rappers, how many artists, how many entertainers really stick around for 10 years plus? Still got hits 10 years later. 
that's still the top one percent to me. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like every time you're gonna be that nigga. Everybody, every new nigga that comes out, everybody think they're gonna be the man. But really, you just gotta let the test of time see it. And I mean, in that case, I mean, Tiger's still around making hits. But I just just because you make hits don't mean you great to me personally. That don't mean like you that nigga. A lot of niggas make hits. There's a lot of niggas making hits for other niggas. That don't make the nigga who came out with the song that nigga. That's how I feel. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Man, nah, nigga, fuck that, bro. If you ain't got no hits, you can't be that nigga. Point Blake, I mean, period. I mean, that's true. If you ain't got no hits, you ain't that nigga. But just because you got hits, that's don't like saying, that nigga. Yeah, it's plenty of great basketball players, bro. But Charles Barkley could never be the great. He ain't got no ring, bro. I mean, Jordan six for six. Hey, when I hey, this is the thing that made me think maybe Jordan is better than LeBron. Psych, never. But I saw this TikTok. I think I sent it to you, and it was a white dude. It was like, who you like better, LeBron or Jordan? He said, this is how I'm gonna explain it to you. If you go to a girl's house and you smash six out of six times, or you go to a girl's house and you smash four out of ten times, who's the better dude? <laughs> and I was like, hmm. <laughs> Damn. I was like, that's a great Damn. analogy. Damn. That's a great analogy. <laughs> Can't beat that. Can't beat that. <laughs> I ain't heard that. That's really good. That was a great analogy, bro. I was like, man. But I still, I was still like, nah. But what about the lunch? <laughs> I was like, what about the lunches? The did it all on the work that we put in on the background. <laughs> it don't matter. <laughs> bro, it don't make a difference. LeBron can never be better than Jordan. Because he was never as intimidating as Jordan. Period. Now, y'all understand, it was a routine for Chicago Bulls game. They would take Michael Jordan out in the third quarter, at the end of the third quarter, and that nigga wouldn't come. Sometimes maybe he might start the fourth, but he might sit there for about three minutes in the fourth. Now, mind you, the beginning of the third quarter, he came out hot. He came out hot. He came out to halftime, you know what I'm saying, doing his thing. Whether he did or didn't, this shit always happened. Every time you watch the Bulls game, motherfucker goes to the bench, but might come back off that motherfucker <laughs> bench. He going to put up like 16 straight motherfucking points. And whatever the score is, the shit done flipped and it's over. Or the Bulls is already up and they done ran away with that motherfucker. <laughs> he going to put up like 16 straight up. When he come off that bench in the fourth quarter, he putting up 16. <laughs> I'm telling you. Like, he coming off the bench with 16, putting this game away every fucking time. And see, it that's was, always I, mean, been- I was a Knicks fan back in the day. Oh, you were shitty. I'm telling you. I watched this motherfucker do the same shit every game. The same shit. Then nigga come off that motherfucker bench, beginning of the fourth quarter, and put up. 14 points, 16 points. They call, they'll call two timeouts. <laughs> they'll call two timeouts. He's still smoking the ass, coming out the motherfucking timeout. <laughs> yeah. Double team, triple team, don't matter. Don't matter. Then five minutes, in the five minutes at the beginning of the fourth, mid, beginning and mid to fourth quarter, then five minutes was Jordan time, and it was over, period. <laughs> See, that's my issue with LeBron, right? Because I feel like, I'm not saying he could be he could play as well as Jordan when it comes to the game of basketball, but that nigga is what six eight, almost three hundred pounds, yo, and you moving like a point guard, yo, you definitely should be a little bit more. I don't know, angry is it dominant? Like, cause all the people I feel like is good, they got that killer instinct to them. For some reason, I don't feel like this nigga LeBron be having that, or he probably got it, he just don't be using it. It makes me mad. <laughs> I feel like the choice of he when he it, cuts it. He saw it when he went in the, uh, that Golden State when they came back for 3-1. And even the one that they lost with Iguodala, that was the best LeBron I've ever seen to me. And them fine, them two finals versus Golden State. I don't give a fuck. That motherfucker LeBron was, that was peak LeBron yeah. to me. Yeah, it's always when he got a chip uh, on his yes. shoulder. It's always when he got a chip on his shoulder. I'm always forever believe that his best basketball was with the Heat when nobody fuck with him. Yeah, that, I mean, but nah, I mean, that's, he's still, that it's a, uh, at Cleveland, at Cleveland, at Cleveland, LeBron, when he came it back, was different. Them finals right there, I'm talking about just the finals, I'm talking about just watching LeBron and saying, 
put something on and show somebody some LeBron. If you only got four, four, 14 games to show a motherfucker, show them them 14 LeBron games and tell me LeBron ain't fucking a beast. <laughs> I think he's one of the greatest athletes to ever touch a basketball. But to me, just because you're a great athlete don't make you the best basketball player. To me, I don't no, like I basketball. He, he I, better than Jordan because Jordan, I'm telling you, tell you that, that Jordan folks, for, he ain't got that. And that's what everybody know that, that watch Jordan. Everybody know that. That's why they was like, that's why they say in the, that level of dominance and all of that. He was like, if you watch Jordan, you, if you watch Jordan, you could see the level of dominance. Even if you watch Kobe, Kobe didn't have that. Kobe, Kobe had it. He could do it at any point in the game. Now, don't get me wrong. Kobe had it to where he could do that shit in the first quarter. You know what I'm saying? He could do that shit in the first quarter, second quarter. He could do it anytime he wanted to. But, man, Joy, it was something about Jordan in that fourth quarter, period, coming off that motherfucking bench. It's See, over. It's over. He would close your ass out. I'm a I'm a Kobe fan because like especially later on in life and stuff like that. By the time he got to the retire, I like the fact that off the court he was one of the most nicest humanitarian niggas. You know what I'm saying in the world. He did great things for great people. On the court though, that Black Mamba, that nigga was a little bit different. You feel me? Because I I personally believe Jordan is probably the best basketball player ever, right? But for this nigga Kobe to even be close to me makes him the best because that was the best player that I've seen. You know what I'm saying? Like on TV. Yeah, I, I mean, I thought, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I lived through these niggas and I hated both of them while they was playing. It's a little so, bit frustrating was, for sure. I never, I never liked Jordan. I never rooted for Jordan. A <laughs> day in my life, I never rooted for Jordan. I didn't want Jordan to beat nobody, anybody. You know, I, I take that back. Utah, Utah, when they were playing Utah in the series, I didn't give a fuck. I hope they beat Utah. I didn't want Carl Malone crack her ass to win <laughs> shit. <laughs> I will have the way. Why shit. is Carl Malone a cracker? Because of his Cause mustache. Because he's a cracker. Motherfucker, go, go talk to him and see what the fuck you get. You be like that, motherfucker, white man. Up there in Utah. <laughs> shit, and he love it too. Cowboy and motherfucker. To bring it back around to KD, because I know we was talking about that earlier. I did get a chance to see him live. He definitely was the best nigga on the court. Like I feel like I was. It was a um. It was a Nets versus uh. It might have been a Nets versus like the Magic or something like that. But if they would have just gave KD the ball every time, like if, if KD would have had the ball in every offensive possession that KD was in the game, they would have won. And like not to make it too simple, but like dead ass. Like KD would come in, score about thir- 10, 12 straight points, and then James Harden try to get his shit. He fuck it up. They go down by ten. KD come back in. Boom, tie it up, take him out. And it's just like, bro, I've never, like, I have seen dominant basketball, but it's like, it's something about that killer instinct that some of these niggas got that make it more entertaining for me to watch. That's what I was just about to say. That is why it's what separates KD from everybody else. KD is the most lethal motherfucker when they come to putting that ball in that motherfucking basket. Dangerous, huh? What you mean is that, like, you can see it? You can see it, dog. Like, as no, soon as, is, like, I'm mad. Is, if I'm the other team, I'm mad as soon as this nigga get the ball. There's no way. Now, I saw that shit when he was in Texas, nigga. But now that he was in Texas, I said, this motherfucker can score any way he fucking won't. Anyway. KD is seven foot, right? He's 16, 6'11. Yeah. He said, with, with the he's over seven, seven foot wingspan. And he's got yeah. a, and he's got a jump shot out the gym. And the boy can do whatever he wants to. Problem is, he just don't want to do all of those things. He like y'all young niggas. Y'all niggas don't have that. Yeah, he, he just want to be. He just want to be KD. Y'all young niggas don't have that. I mean, he just don't want to do all of those things. He wasn't. He, I mean, when you say strive to be great, you don't strive to be great. S C A. Like niggas who don't have that much talent, you can't say that they don't strive to be the greatest just because they don't have as much talent as KD. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Nobody's had this much talent as this boy. But yet, why he, you know what I'm saying? Jordan. So if KD has Dame Lillard's drive. Jordan, Jordan, Jordan Kobe, or, or I wouldn't say the bar because the bar got a completely different uh, skill set. But uh, Jordan and uh, Kobe for sure. You might, uh, might. Jordan and Kobe can't score like KD. You don't think so? No. 
they can't score like as in his play style, or they can't score like the amount that he could score. Like it, it was it with as much ease. They worked for them shots. You see Jordan in that motherfucking post, the niggas pump faking two going two sides, pump faking, jumping the bitch up, doing all this shit. You see Kobe, he up there, he done crossed over a motherfucker, get into the lane, he got to do all this. Nigga, KD come up here, foo, foo, pick his spot. Let's go back. Rise up, oh. double crossover, <laughs> quick one straight step, up, pull up. <laughs> quick one come step, down, pull gonna up. Go. Oh, are you going to run out at me? I'm going to take it to the lane on your ass. Eh, eh, lay up. Eh, let's go. He I do mean, make nobody it scores easy. As much easy. None of them can score with as much ease as him, but he ain't better than but none of them. Why is that? That's what people, nobody can score with as much as he can in five on five, period. Yeah, I guess that's where, I guess that is a little bit of a difference. I feel like that's why, like, the, the difference of errors and, like, what people have seen, that's what makes the conversation so difficult, right? To me, the goal is just to be in the conversation, right? There is no one literal goal because you take it, what, Jordan was 80, 90, you take it back 67, there's going to be niggas talking about, you know what I'm saying, somebody else, Jerry West and them, you know what I'm saying? Like it's No, but so, what I'm saying is with this, the, the ease of how he scores. I think that's the I mean, development of the game. that in any era. It don't matter. It shit, KD could have played in any era because couldn't nobody fucking guard that shit. I don't see the era thing when you talking about, when you just completely talking about with, how with, if motherfuckers with come out. With his body, with his body, with his body type and his play style, that to me, that's the development of the game, right? Because we talk about 60s, 70s, this short white nigga is like dribbling like this to where 80, 90s, you feel me, niggas actually got some style, more athleticism coming to the game to where now you got every seven footer got a jump shot. You know what I'm saying? The game's just different in that regard. Niggas is developing. I, I think, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's seven foot, but he could have played in any fucking era because he didn't even have to go. And they said, oh, well, he couldn't play with us in the uh, in the 90s. But we were so rough. I don't rough. believe that. I definitely I believe, believe he could have put up some numbers. I don't believe he even needed to go down there for you to be rough with him, nigga. Fuck you. You can go down there and keep fucking banging away in that paint all you fuck you want to. Right, can you hang like with this nigga, though? He's going ass up for 70. <laughs> nigga, I don't care. I'll never go down there. You, you, you can invite me down there all you want to, Charles Oakley. I'm not coming. Yeah, I'm going to have court, my boy. <laughs> and play me a motherfucking point guard. They would have played Kevin Durant at point guard in the 90s. <laughs> I mean, I mean, oh well, I oh well, I'm not gonna get a rebound the whole game. Oh well, I don't want a fucking rebound, nigga. I'm gonna light your ass up for 50 while you sit down there waiting for me to come down there. You come out here and throw an elbow at me at the three point line. You wasn't allowed to get away with that shit. And one, you know. What I mean? <laughs> You wasn't allowed to get with people when they, when they talk about that kind of shit with, with a nigga like Kevin Durant. The rest of the niggas, I mean, a lot of them are suspect. But LeBron, LeBron and Durant, period. I don't give a fuck. Them niggas gonna play in the 90s easily. I'll Steph say any All Star. There's no All Star that wouldn't survive in the 90s era. Any All Star would have made like the level of talent. Name an NBA, NBA All Star. No, Who? Them, the, them about the only two. Them about the Who? only two that survived in the 90s. No, you tripping. Giannis would have survived in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 Giannis. LeBron survives in the 90s. They Lillard survives in the 90s. Giannis ain't small, though. Giannis is not a small man. Them shoulders, them shoulders and shit, he looked like Kevin Willis. There was there was people built like Giannis, but not even as tall, not as, not as athletic. So I will give you Giannis, but he, he ain't who we're talking about. When we talk Joel and B. And B could. And B could. That's what I'm saying. Every NBA All Star. You ain't said nobody but a center yet. Oh, Dame Lillard, Steph Curry. Centers, because all centers are going to be universal regardless. Dame Lillard. Eh. Dame Dollar. Russell Westbrook. I don't think he's. I don't think he's all NBA. Russell Russell Westbrook. Westbrook would have got done up in his prime. In his prime, Russell's giving these niggas in the '90s issues. Yeah, and yeah, he's right with him yeah. in their face. He wants to play like that. You know, who I, feel like, you know who I feel, feel like fits in that play style back in the back in the nineties, eighties. Uh, Jim, Jimmy B. Hey, I got a new dude, Jimmy Butler. Come on, buckets. Come on, I think, bro. I think I think Jimmy B fits into that to that play style. Carmelo Anthony. No, relax. Carmelo no. right now. Carmelo right now coming off the bench in the nineties. I think you're tripping. 
He would. He don't play no defense. He's soft as cotton. <laughs> I was a Carmelo fan. I like. I he, thought, but, but Carmelo. I mean, excuse me. Things I said about Durant, I used to say about Carmelo. Because I used to think uh, Carmelo's shot so smooth. He was just so smooth. It still it. is. But he can't. J.R. Smith. Off the dribble. His off the dribble is trash. I, no, no, no. He didn't develop. because he's he old. Uh, well, he didn't develop it early on. You he know didn't what develop saying? into KD like he should have developed into KD. That's what Carmelo should have developed into. Nah, he's, he's he collected his money and just kept shooting in the gym. Because the shot ain't got nothing but better. Exactly. Uh, I'm not knocking him for it. But oh, okay. That's, that's still a story. But I don't think that don't mean he could have made it in the 90s. No, he couldn't have made it in the 90s. Nigga would have fucked him up. That nigga would have fucked him up. Hey, everybody, everybody, are you, are you everybody's tripping? Pat, everybody's Denver, Pat Beverly, Carmelo like, with the headband? Carmelo with the braids? The he'd have been coming off the bench, dog. If he, if he was on a good team, if he was on a good team, He'd been coming off the bench. He'd have been. Oh, so he would have started if he's on a He'd bad been team. Six man. He'd have been six man because he couldn't do nothing else. He couldn't do nothing else. This. I don't think that's accurate. We gotta get some rebounds. I don't think that's accurate. A lot of shot percentages went up now, so that's why they devalue the rebound because the rebound is less. You see what I'm saying? Valuable. Yeah. Yeah, and they're longer too. Because niggas are shooting from longer, so the, the ball is hitting harder. Oh, yeah, and going out to the three-point line. That's how, harder. yeah, yeah. So you don't need these big dudes in there. You don't need all that shit clumped up there. When you shooting a fucking uh, 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 a teardrop from the free throw line, that shit going to bounce, and all of the congestion going to be right there to get the rebound. Yeah. Now, you shooting from half court, motherfucker, that bitch bouncing off and fucking damn near to the free throw line. So you need to be rebound. able to catch that ball and move. <laughs> West Westbrook got all them goddamn rebounds because people was he realized for a long time that ain't no sense of going down there. I can say right here because the, the the damn rebound is gonna be coming out further over these seven foot niggas' heads. <clears throat> Get that bitch a run. Question. It out. Yes, real fast. Did these niggas really like? Oh fuck! You made me forget my damn question. Oh, we got the fight now. What was the question? How the hell? What was the question? I forgot, bro. Was it basketball related? Yes, nigga. Was it about the All Stars? Mello rebounds. Luka. Oh, Luka have you heard of my nigga Kenny Lofton Jr.? I saw him uh uh verse uh in the summer league game. His <laughs> 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 was beating uh beating uh what's the boy name? <laughs> The first, the, 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 the whole grid, whatever the nigga is. Hey, hey, I'm putting in my ticket right now. That's my rookie of the year, bro. Kenny Lofton Jr., bro. This guy be worth some money. I don't know. I never heard his name before. Nah, nah. I've been watching him since high school. I've been watching him since. I didn't think he was going to like make it to the league, bro, because he always played like that. Uh, I want to say Tennessee. So him back in Tennessee is even better. Like, I know he's in Memphis, but I don't think he's from. Let me double check, bro. But that dog, he from the South, though, bro. That's a big nigga from the South. That motherfucker like Charles Barkley for real. I was putting, putting Holmgren on his ass and boom, boom, boom. He was killing Holmgren in that first half. What? That's what I, bro. My dog, I, I, he went to Louisiana. Like he from he Texas. Was. He from Texas. He from Texas. He went to college at Louisiana Tech. Even Texas. I like, and... I like Holmgren, but boy, if he don't get you know, if he don't do something about that weight, man, ain't no way he gonna compete with them boys. Oh yeah, because everybody in the NBA is uh, just as strong and ain't as big as Kenny. Yeah, and Kenny, he's short. He's he look kind of big. I think I'm honestly, I think he gotta get in shape. Man strength is gonna kill him. Them Africans, them Africans gonna kill him. <laughs> hey, all the way in Baca. <laughs> Anything? Hey, kill him. They strong. Hey, who's the one that played for uh uh is what that played for Toronto? Tell me, Biombo? No, the one that played the one that played for uh Toronto. I think that's Biombo, wasn't it? I know Biombo was. Oh, maybe he got traded to um Atlanta. 
The one that was in the one that's I mean, it, I, any of the motherfuckers who got some strength to their ass gonna kill it. I mean, you, you gonna put it? You gonna put him? Joel and B. Oh, barbecue chicken. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and B. Ante <laughs> What are you gonna do with Jokic? Jokic. <laughs> Jokic is gonna just walk. Jokic is gonna walk into it. It's just like Jokic ain't even gonna turn his back on it. Jokic can get knock him over without he, without losing his dribble. Hey, Jokic, <laughs> best footwork and best best big best footwork on a big man in the league. Why? Nah, because Giannis can go north to south. That don't got nothing to do with footwork. I think it do. Now Giannis be Gian, Giannis feet can go sideways and make him go forward for some reason. What? For some reason, when y'all just take a Euro step, he go forward. He go. That's because he wears a size eighty seven. You put your foot to the right. You put your foot to the right. How are you still going forward? His foot so <laughs> long. Pause. He's still covering ground. That's what I'm saying. Though. I mean, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. Jokic do have good. good I mean, Jokic like traditional big good. man footwork, bro. That nigga Jokic is moving and he's light stepping. He, he's like he's light. It no, bro, because, bro, it's Nick, bro, you got to think, bro. This niggas out here named Tim Duncan. This niggas out here named, uh, what's the white boy from Dallas? Timmy Duncan uh, had terrible footwork. <laughs> no, he didn't. I feel like he had good moves. I don't I don't see Timmy moving that much, bro. No, Tim Duncan is Mr. Fundamental. Nigga, you better watch right. him out, bro. So, <laughs> like, so, like, so basic footwork. He ain't nothing special. No, he's he's saucing niggas up down there, bro. Yeah, Timmy is getting right. He was old school deceptive. I ain't saying nigga had amazing footwork, y'all. Hey, he, he was old. I, I give you that. I give you that, too. But Tim Duncan... You can't you can't front on that, that footwork. So no, he had he had good footwork. He used to turn them boy. He used to turn people around like they didn't even realize it, and he just sitting there bank shot. <laughs> Go watch some Tim Duncan highlights, bro. Nigga, I know who Tim Duncan is. I look, he fuck with the Spurs, nigga. I look, he nah, fuck with the Spurs. But you need to put some respect on his name, bro. That's Mister Fundamental. He's one of the. I would say he's definitely out there, top power forwards of all time. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, comparing Tim Duncan's game versus, like, a nigga like a Jokic or even Giannis, for that matter, the footwork is different, bro. Like, them niggas no, are but not Giannis moving. Is completely different. That's completely uh, athletic. But if you're comparing Tim Duncan to Jokic, I'm taking I'm taking Tim Duncan all day. I don't know. I would take Tim Duncan as a player. I just think that the big niggas these days got some amazing footwork. That I feel like maybe it's more average. It's more common for a big nigga to be able to move. Passing. But see, they, I think you get that's what it is. Passing. It's the passing you, you're getting that from the passing, and Jokic does way more. Pass. Tim Duncan was why would he pass it? It was no, it weren't. Yeah, we, by the time we, he get the ball, all over. the passes that they made was in order to get the ball to, get the Tim. Ball to Tim. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> that was, was the whole point. Worry about passing. So, I think the passing more, you know, what I'm saying, lends you more to the to the footwork because that's why I, I go with Jokic is the passing. You know, he, that's he, he's a, he, he can put himself set aside from everybody else. And that's why I used to say Jokic wouldn't be shit if Boogie Cousins never got hurt. Then Boogie Cousins goes to Denver, and every time Jokic comes out for a breather, they put in Boogie Cousins, yeah, and it just is exactly what I said. You see you glimpses of that. it. You're talking about Boogie Cousins from after he got hurt, hurt. Nigga, fucking Boogie Cousins was the best player in the NBA. Well, yes, bro. bro. That's what I used to. I used to was, say that. He was, he was almost like a that. diesel. He was almost like a big diesel. He was the best. He was better than Anthony Davis. He was better than all them niggas when he first got there, bro. I feel sorry for. I feel so sorry for him when he got hurt because that boy lost about three hundred million dollars. <laughs> he was killing them niggas, Not bro. Even that. He probably I, now looking back. He probably he probably lost about nine hundred to. I mean, he probably damn near lost because he still would be reing up on contracts right now. Yeah, grabbing championships. Yes, he would still be reing up on maxes. Man, yeah, he definitely that, would have been on somebody's championship so team. Bad for him. I was. I feel so bad for him. I couldn't believe it. He and they happened at just the worst possible contract that year. He was supposed to sign for like two hundred million dollars. He ends up signing. That same, the exact time he, he ends up signing a $1 million one-year contract. I blame UK's athletic training department. Hey, the <laughs> fuck UK. But him, John Wall, AD, 
Rondo Damn, Rondo hold on. What's going on? Yeah, like, <laughs> now, I'm going to take Rondo out because he's from Louisville. But, like, these I niggas know, all been really, hurt. Bro, all the boys is, is damn got fucked up injuries. That is crazy. Is That's it the crazy, Blue Devil right? curse? What is it? Big, it's the Wildcat curse, nigga. The Wildcat curse. Blue Devils is Duke. I'm tripping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want to shit on UK yeah. for a second. While Sean ain't here. Damn, I didn't even realize that. No, Zion, think, you can keep going. Zion came Why does from, everybody uh, Zion from Duke, Duke. Get hurt? Zion came from Duke. Zion was a Duke. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Shit, uh, where's PJ Washington at? Oh, wait, are y'all Montrez? Uh, not Montrez, that's UofL. That's UofL, okay. Even then, he's still a beast. He's still a dog. Man, he just got arrested for some bags. <laughs> Man, yeah, yeah, like nigga a nigga that I yeah. knew that was getting recruited out of high school, he said every recruiter says the one thing about niggas from Louisville are like Louisville players. They will be great, but they smoke too much goddamn weed. Something about it. Something about being in Louisville, Kentucky, not having shit to do. Niggas get on that weed, man. And that's what they was, and it is funny because uh my people's parents was asking me. Why has he had three pounds of weed? Da, 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 da. I'm like, no. Three pounds <laughs> of weed isn't that much if you're finna be home the whole offseason here. And he's in the NBA. He's <laughs> just not the person that's supposed to be picking it up and bringing it back to fucking Louisville. Yeah, it's dumb as hell. Here comes on. Let's get it. Kyrie. It could have been, been here all the day. Mistake? I'm just saying. That's dumb as hell. Let me tell you something. Every player brings up and brings their own shit when they go back home. They only got, they, they bring in their car back and they bring in the weed back at the same fucking time. That's why everybody gets keeps getting knocked it off. Don't you understand? They're like, oh, you ain't supposed to do it. You think niggas don't do it? No, the niggas just didn't get caught. <laughs> everybody so how do you, does it. Same thing with the NFL, too. Nigga, I'm talking about no name players. My, my cousin, shit. Detroit, when he got, he got signed to Green Bay. This motherfucker got signed to Green Bay, fresh contract. Soon as that motherfucker got a free time, they go right back and got pulled over on his goddamn own street. Soon as he came back, nigga didn't even get a chance to unload the goddamn car. Got a brand new car, second contract, first second contract. I ain't this nigga ain't been in the league. He played a little bit that season. That was about it. Look. Is, it, is it is it is it is it tragic? Is it is it fucked up or should should we just not like no, niggas, should, shit, niggas should be able to smoke weed, weed, right? We ride with weed every day. We just didn't get caught. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> never, shit, I never I never have weed in my car. I'm never yeah, I'm never ever, admitted I've never to even that. you smoke oh, right? We get caught all the time. And you didn't get caught. Shit. I mean, I ain't still a little bit. Ain't like the nigga was trying to transport it so he because he was selling dope. Nah, that's what I said. That's what I was like. They yeah. was like, he finna make some money. I was like, he's not just selling three pounds. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. He's got enough sell. money to invest more into his weed game he's than like three pounds. Smoker, like <laughs> big blunts, nigga. <laughs> I'm in the league, 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 nigga. That is all personal. A nigga's not finna ask nobody and say nothing about no weed for two months. <laughs> Wherever he was going, he was going there. He was gonna sit there for probably two months, do his training, and he went and got the best weed he knew how to get, you know, the weed he like. You know what I'm saying? Whatever his strand is, he had What's it here? There's a um... he was playing for uh uh, I can't remember who he was playing for. Was the Clippers? Nah, because he went from Clippers to the Lakers. Then the Lakers traded him the sh- Wiz- They traded him to Wizards. He was part of the uh, Russell trade. So he went. Okay. So he, he was, was part of Russell Westbrook. Yeah, so I mean, I'm saying wherever he went, got to leave. Bro. I mean, hey, and Virginia is a legal state. So he just left Virginia. He was in D.C. Well, <laughs> he, bought his, he bought what he liked, and he fucking. He just left the legal state. In a state that don't they don't motherfucking allow it. Caught in Kentucky. He was almost home too. Think he was in Kentucky. <laughs> he lived in Louisville. He was almost home. <laughs> oh, he actually from Louisville. Yeah, yeah, he from Louisville. 
Yeah, like it's, it's a bit. There's a thing called uh, Derby Bowl, which is like a basketball tournament out here in Louisville. It's a dirt bowl. Dirt bowl. Explain it real quick. You from here? I'm out here yeah, just visiting. Everybody, me. everybody got a dirt bowl, but you know no, we saying? don't. What's well, a dirt? We got a dirt heard. bowl. See, it's, a, it's a basketball. It's a basketball tournament, but it's like a street. Like it's not street ball, but it's like you know how they be having the tournaments at like the Rucker and shit like that. Three you know, what I'm saying New York, like that's, that's three shit. nigga five on five, but just like oh. at an outside court type shit. Niggas got teams. Niggas got jerseys. Niggas is infamous for it. You know, so you got the two time dirt ball champs and shit like that. Grown ass niggas can be young as eighteen year old ass nigga, but like they just out there out there hooping. Like how they do up in New York, but down here it's called the dirt ball. I got you. Yeah, they don't have shit like that, right? Like, oh, man, like, usually man. people got a dirt bowl. It may not be called state. dirt bowl, but yeah. I live in football states. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't so, have shit like that. So it's just it's it's just a big ass like turn basketball tournament, bro. Niggas you just got yeah, to, uh, y'all basketball and shit like that. Yeah, people come out to watch basketball. Wouldn't nobody come out to watch that in Florida? Because you know we're by Indiana too. So you know what I'm saying? That whole little area. Yeah, y'all love basketball. We love football. They had jamborees and shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we yeah, definitely yeah, got yeah. a jamboree. See, our little league uh, football be having jamborees. That shit get big, shit get live. Oh, yeah, they little league football bigger than uh, Charleston's, too. Like, they got big playoffs. Like, I don't I know if Charleston's they got bigger, but Man, the way niggas, they shit niggas, out here niggas, is this niggas, shit, it's niggas, serious. Niggas going to die about them tykes, let me tell you. Look, look. <laughs> <laughs> niggas going to die about them tykes, bro. I ain't going to lie. Oh, me, bro. Nah, I mean, like, Bowling Green Panthers stand up, nigga. Yeah. Nigga. yeah nigga. Word. And shout out to the Oklahoma Steelers, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> Get it out, bro. Get it out, bro. <laughs> no, it's real Get shit, it though. Out, niggas bro. is real serious about that. And niggas just stop getting a fuck around middle school, high school. Because in Louisville, I'm pretty sure there's no middle school football league. You still technically are the junior league of the uh, of the little league type shit. It's not until you get to high school. Oh, but that's Damn, the, you don't even go. You don't even go from middle school to high school. See, nine, nine, little, but not from what I know. See, I went to I went to middle school and high school in Bowling Green. That's another little place in Kentucky. But uh, that like, man, their middle school. Yeah, you play uh, this middle school versus this middle school, right? But you still play for like your local area team. No, we didn't have no school. middle school teams. See, like we we, we did where I went to school at. We didn't have middle school teams, but like you would go, you could you would go to the B team. Uh, for the high school team, some niggas, some niggas did do that, but like most niggas didn't do that. Like either niggas are too scared, or niggas probably just wasn't good enough. Like how many spots do you really have for like a seven, eight grader on the you know what I'm saying B- freshman JV yeah, team? Oh, uh, the B team, you you would uh, it'd be it'd be a lot of it'd be a lot of cats playing eighth grade, be be a, be on the B team in the eighth grade, not seventh grade, but See, eighth grade. You would be on the JV B team, so you still, you know, you got varsity oh, JV, yeah, no, we ain't and have then that. you got B team. So you're not have... on JV. You're not actually on JV. You got a B team. We played on like. I so y'all didn't have y'all first. didn't just y'all just didn't have a freshman team. Nah, so the way yeah, you say kind of the same thing, but you, if you was in eighth grade, you could still play. Right. See that. From see, that's, grade, that's what we did. Play. If you was in eighth grade, you still could play on the freshman team and maybe JV, but you definitely wouldn't play varsity. Yeah, but in high school, you have var- varsity, cats. JV. And it was then... two cats that played in eighth grade. They played on. They played JV in eighth grade. Was nice. And when yeah, and then they, <laughs> they varsity ninth grade. They ninth grade niggas on varsity. That's hard. That's hard. They cut me from the B team. Shout out Damn. to Justin Darnell, <laughs> Terrell Gibbs, both of them. Things, they was. They was, I know they was the same year as me, and them niggas went, they were playing old JV in eighth grade. Well, as soon as they got to the high school, they was legal enough to get on the damn <laughs> varsity team. See, no, but see, I, they cut me in eighth grade. I made it, I skipped B team in ninth grade. I went straight to JV. <laughs> Said, fuck it, we ball. Yeah, since so y'all want to cut me, nigga, fuck you, nigga. I'm going straight to JV, nigga. We have, it starts at Pee Wee, and then you go You got to, cut uh, in eighth grade? Right. Yeah, in eighth grade, I tried out for the B team, and they cut me like day two. And they said, you going to play C team again. And I said, fuck you, fuck nigga. Right. So I played, that's why I played C team for two years. The fuck is the C team, cuz? C team was like our middle school that. team. Yeah, they, yeah, they started team. doing that for a middle school team because the uh, the rec centers and shit right here wasn't be able to support them shit. Yeah, they weren't able to support the the leagues like they used to. 
because the, the like you said, the little league leagues used to be real good, but they started falling off. So instead of all these soft little kids, they didn't have enough kids and shit with these soft niggas. <laughs> so they took all the high schools and made a C team, which would be like seventh and eighth graders, and that was it. They wouldn't put no freshmen on there. Freshmen had to play B team. So, so would our- some of y'all C teams play other people's B teams? No, our C team would play against everybody's C teams, and then the B teams would everybody play against all the B teams. So the C yeah, teams would play on the random ass night, like a Wednesday or a Tuesday. Right, right, right. And then the you would watch the B team and the JV games on Thursday night. So you would get two games for the price of one. Okay, that's and fine. then Friday nights it was yeah, all that's varsity. Weird, that's you know weird. what I'm saying? So my freshman, my freshman year. And my sophomore year, I would have a game Thursday night and a game Friday night. And yeah, I would, I would play, play Thursday play. night. That's practice. And then Friday night, I would sit on the bench all day. <laughs> yeah. Like me. That, that was the stupidest shit on earth. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, I'm not going to that shit. <laughs> Like, hey, you see how my family support me, bro? You see? Somebody's gonna, get hurt. Somebody gonna get hurt. When they get hurt, then he gonna come. He just played last night. Why you gonna put a motherfucker out there in your game and just play last night? What kind but of see the dudes that started? These niggas played two days in a row. Hey, it would kill niggas though. Didn't know no better. Man, that shit even the fucking. To even get ready to do that shit is fucking exhausting. Hey, that's why Tyreek hurt his broke his hip bone, I believe. You remember Tyreek, the running back we had? Yeah. Tyreek was our running back. Let me tell you, Tyreek, this is how far Tyreek was. He were, he was our starting running back <laughs> on Thursday night. He would run regular that night, right? You know what I'm saying? He didn't want to go oh. too hard because he knew on Friday night he was our backup running back. He was so nice because our starter running back would just wear and tear on niggas, right? Full black. We run a triple option. By the time he came in, he was averaging a touchdown to carry because he was quicker and we had a special play for him. So he would come in, second drive or whatever, hand him the ball, and it would be a 45-yard touchdown, 35-yard touchdown, 25-yard touchdown. He was just a secret weapon. But on Thursday nights, he was the down back coming through the hole, you know what I'm saying? Like he doing the Wearing tear plays like the other running back. One new night, same as usual. <laughs> One move, he's on the run, clear lane to the end zone, out of nowhere. And then they got hip, just said, ah. And then they said his hip attacked, disattached, just in stride while he was running. He had to learn how to run all over again. And he ended up playing the next year, though. That's why that's the dumbest idea ever to have <laughs> people play two games in two nights. But he, he, he was like a specialist, so he wasn't supposed to, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was on special teams. Like, that's what they would do. The JV niggas. That- I wouldn't give a fuck what you're doing. If you warm up for a game two nights in a row, you going to get hurt. If you're just warming up, you getting ready for a football game? How you get ready for a football game two nights in a row? No. You can't do that to yourself mentally. You, there's no way you cannot do it. They still you, do it I mean, now. I feel like y'all, I feel like they ain't all the higher levels than I have. And if you sit there saying you getting ready for a game and where you play, you me. I, I play defense. I play linebacker. Nope. That is, you can't do that shit. <laughs> hey, you I played online. Italy, what you mean? I'm in the trenches. I can hear. They got banging heads every play. What? <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, oh my, y'all, niggas, y'all niggas is two inches away from each other. I don't give a fuck. Y'all all live in this shit. It, it, I'm, it, no, it's not the same playing linebacker. Uh-oh, it's we not- pulling it out. We pulling it out. Let's look at my dog. Let's pull it up. We watching the highlights. Oh, snap. Look at it right there. Uh-oh, outside linebacker. Ty- oh, blitz. I'm coming. I'm coming. Where you think you're going, boy? Oh, you play, yeah. you play, you played Will, huh? You played Will? Yes, yeah, Sersky. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that was me too. We shot. We shot. <laughs> Come on, boy. Oh, yeah. Come on, boy. 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 Come
Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Fuck that running back. Fuck that running back. You said fuck the running back. <laughs> Fumbles, nigga. Punch yeah, fuck, yeah, look, that's how. Let me tell you, Wiz's mindset. He's so excited he gets the fumble. He doesn't care about the touchdown. He didn't no, realize it was a touchdown. Probably until he got to the sideline. Man, game situation. <laughs> these fuck niggas can't hang, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Somebody gonna score that bitch. I just, I made the tackle though. Nigga, that's I'm all he care about. <laughs> I made the tackle. That's all. Yeah, he... usually. Yeah, ain't no taking on no blocks, huh? No, <laughs> yeah, fuck all that. Cause think, bro. Most of these niggas think about it, bro. A high school wide receiver, he don't want block, bro. Man, get the fuck out of no, here. I didn't either. Right, I, right. I, and you don't I, want I, block. I, I didn't think about damn block. I'm talking about defensive tackles. I played before you, so it wasn't all that passing. Look, nigga. I'm talking about it's guards and tackles coming after me. Well, come on, come on. See if you can duck your, you, you can dip your hands. Cause I'm gonna duck up under them shit. <laughs> nigga. First play of the game, I'm gonna slap you in your throat. I'm gonna I'm gonna chin check you, and then you're not gonna block me the rest of the game, bro. Game over. I ain't take on now block. You know how you play linebacker, the motherfucker tell you uh take on the block challenge, rip through. I'm not doing that. Rip through. I'm not Hell, doing that. I'm not ripping through damn one of them big motherfuckers. I can't see I'm a duck. <laughs> I'm gonna duck him a shit his money. I'm gonna get around him by the time the balls were. I, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be in position anyway, bro. Fuck off. Yeah, they been having fast. Hey, y'all, fast I running. used to hate you niggas. The niggas that wanna act like they got the football now and do the oh, little. Yeah. Uh-uh. Oh. <laughs> oh, I say, man, fuck them offers alive. If them offers alive, it can't handle me out there. I'm gonna tell you right now, you ain't gonna put nail touch me, bro. You're not putting nail pole on me. All and I'm that's how I get a hold of the car. I'm going to you fast enough to beat before I make my move around you. That's the only shot y'all got. Don't get me wrong. I'm not taking him on. So he got. if you got a running back, he can, he can ski. But he better ski. Because if not, if I get around you, you I'm done. I'm bringing the thunder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm bringing the thunder after that. Hey, and I'm going to tell you right now, what I played was before horse collar. <laughs> horse collar was not a foul when I played. Oh, wait, this you at wide out? No, 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 I'm on defense. No, you at wide Oh, okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. I thought you was at wide out right here. I ain't never going to be at wide out, cuz. I stopped I mean, playing I offense at the freshman year. Fuck all that. I snatched, I snatched motherfuckers by the inside of their shoulder pads all day. I ain't never motherfucker putting up. There was no horse collar. It was no horse collar penalty when I first started playing. That shit didn't come in until. That's wild. Right, right after <laughs> I, like, right after my last year, was was when the horse collar started. Man, you, I jump on a bitch back and motherfucker grab your ass by the back of you, ah, 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 and choke your ass out. He ass coughing. That's how you handle that, though. That's how you handle that. <laughs> Think about it, cause niggas gonna try to dance. Niggas gonna avoid. Hey, niggas gonna do all that. Here, all night. I, I don't give a fuck about all that shaking you doing. Your yeah, neck ain't going nowhere, nigga. Yeah, right. I'ma grab. My, I'ma put my hand right on the inside of your shoulder pads, right there at your neck. If I grab you, it's over. I'ma lock hey. your ass up, bring it, pop. That's Spin your legendary. Ass up, whatever. Your be hurt. Love block people me. go, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the cameraman team. ain't even know you blocked it. Did y'all exactly. run it back? <laughs> you said what? So did you run it back? Oh uh, no. Oh, I, thought you I did that. Now. I did that at KCU though. And my my high ass, bro. I was not in shape, bro. I did not make it. I think I got uh ran down by the holder. You remember that? Nah, I don't. It was our first. Scr- it was our first scrimmage against uh Davidson, bro. Somebody had blocked. Somebody. No, 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 no. Niggas, niggas either, uh, niggas missed a field goal or something, bruh. And I caught that bitch and I tried to take off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they was like, go, go over there. Go, go over there. Nigga, I'm thinking I'm all the way there. You know how you run with your head back, nigga. I look down. I'm at the 50-yard line and I look behind me. There's a nigga right there. I try to move my legs and shit, niggas. <laughs> I was mad as hell. I was trying to make that roster. Hey, you thought you took off. You looked down. You I was like, was what's going the whole lot of field Hey, what's that? That's what? Three points? I'm with it. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to have to catch out on y'all, boy, man. I got to uh, get my That's daughter. That's cool, man. Appreciate you. I'm going to holler at y'all, boy, man. Blessing. Yes, sir. I'm going to finish out the highlights. We're going to finish out the highlights. Yeah, yeah man. Close out the highlights. Close out the highlights, man. You know what? I think we should go ahead and call it, bro. It's been magnificent. Check out this number 32 with talent. the scoop here, nigga. Bring that Look, in. You just want to put that, ooh, ooh. Yeah. You thought he had a play? You thought he had a highlight? He thought he did, but it didn't really work out. 
That's y'all, y'all, y'all gotta understand. I don't even really give a fuck, y'all. I'm not one of those guys. I definitely gave up on football a long time ago. Bro, all right, bro. But I was one of those. We out of here. You just wanna let niggas know you was nice. Hey man, this has been another episode of D Podcast, bro. We appreciate y'all coming back around. We gonna keep coming to you, holding it down. Ugh, ugly face, nigga. I appreciate y'all. <laughs>